dare to be a clown? Show me a hand. How many of you know the bassoon before you got the booklet or saw in the video? Oh, I'm glad. It's not a very common instrument, you know, but the bassoon has been called the clown of the orchestra. And you know why? Because it <laughs> looks like this. And it can make sounds like this. Yup, that's the bassoon. So, up in the Northeast, back in 2014, in the province called Nakhon Ratasima, the only school that has this instrument is my school. A 16-year-old girl has been carrying a big snare drum, never play a melodic instrument before. Marching outside in the sun for four years has a big dream. Not only does she want to get out of the heat and sit in the band room, but she also has a big dream of becoming different, unique, and cool by playing that instrument. And that girl is me. So my relationship with this instrument started when the co-director of my band posted in the band Facebook group looking for someone to play the bassoon. For the first time in forever, they finally want a bassoonist. And I know that this is my chance to be cool both ways. Out of the sun cool and unique cool, very economical. <laughs> and I recall my first impression of this big, bulky, weird looking instrument. I looked at this dusty, sad bassoon and the co-director said, it had been played in 23 years. Wow, 23 years. So I wonder why nobody wants to play the bassoon. Or maybe they don't really need the bassoon in the band. Well, I wish I could remember why I thought it was so cool, but anyway, I decided to grab that chance. Now, one big obstacle to me becoming a cool bassoonist was I had no one to teach me. There's only one bassoon in the province and no teachers. So I had to teach myself. At first, I just played the keys. I discovered that the clown of the orchestra nickname made sense. Then I get a lot of input from the internet, like exercise, theory, technique. I was really struggling with the fingering. And so I was searching on the internet and couldn't figure out. And all I could find on the internet was the famous joke among the bassoonists, which is, it takes three thumbs to play them properly. <laughs> it is very confusing. So, but something happened. I started to fall in love with this silly clown. Did that ever happen to you guys when you think something is strange or silly? But all of a sudden you found that you love it and you started to understand it. So I started practicing every day and every day I even slept over at school so I can practice all night because I'm not allowed to bring an instrument home. I put so much sacrifice and dedication to this instrument because I had to. I'm not a natural musical genius and I had only play a rhythm instrument, the snare drum. Never ever a melodic instrument with chords and notes. It is a tough work. So I spent a lot of time with the bassoon and it feels like it's become a part of me. And people even started calling me Toy Bassoon before I was Toy Snare Drum. Then the day comes, I am holding my bassoon, joining the ensemble for the first time for rehearsal. All the stairs and the eyes are on me as I walk in. And you know that feeling like when you've been practicing or doing something on your own and you're like, I'm so ready, I'm gonna show up. Everyone's gonna be excited with me. I sit down, I play, and it's a flop. Whether because the bassoon's ability to produce a bright staccato sound or the jovial or comedic quality of its low register or the fact that I suck, people laugh at me. My parents even commented on the appearance that why does it look like someone just turned a bong into a saxophone, a bong like a water pipe? And they asked me, why don't I choose something normal or common like other people do? Or why don't I stick with my snare drum? 
People come up with so many metaphors to make fun of the bassoon. Some say it looks like a bed pose, but most common one is the bong, like the school janitor. I remember I was practicing at the back of my music building, and he came up to me and asked, what is this? And I told him, it's called the bassoon. And he said, <laughs> I'm glad there's no smoke coming out, or I will have to report you. And I was like, I told him it's not a bong, it's really an instrument. And he just laughed, you know. People just come up with so many, you know, funny and weird metaphor to make fun of the bassoon and just like, yeah, it does look like a bong, you know, I don't blame them. So honestly, it turned out to be the exact opposite of what I hoped. I was so ready to become unique and now I found that being unique can be really embarrassing. First time performing in public wasn't much more fun than that first rehearsal with ensemble. The cellist next to me can't even hear me playing. And my bassoon just got covered by those bright and loud brass instruments. One say the bassoon is an instrument that better seen than heard. As the fact that you can't really recognize the sound of the bassoon, unless they got a solo, and therefore the bassoonist only plays one or two notes per piece and only heard for a minute in any given concert. So frustrating, you know, all that work, growing a third thumb, and no one can appreciate it. I miss being toy snare drum because I want to be heard. Got a lot of solo, marching in a front row with eight snare players and super loud being the center loud that the whole school can hear me by hitting just one note. Why do I want to be a clown blowing a bong? I'm completely stressed out and feel like I can no longer cope with life. You know that feeling? A 16-year-old girl wanting to be a star and flopping and being ignored instead. It really hurt. Then one day, I went to the symphony orchestra concert. You guys imagine this, that confident violinist or the first clarinetist who is right across the stage after everyone else, the only one who gets to shake the conductor's hand and this is in a position just on the conductor's left, closer to the audience. They are the star of the night. And many common and normal instruments that people know are giving their attention. And all of a sudden, I caught myself cheering and supporting that one particular instrument. I am cheering the bassoonist each time they blow those one or two notes. I'm thrilled. Even though the bassoons were not very loud, but every note they played stood out to me. I could hear them through the maze of other instruments, even if the audience couldn't. So I start to think, what does it mean to be embarrassed? I realize there are different kinds of embarrassment. There's one kind that we all know, like tripping over yourself or random items, but that stuff doesn't really matter. There's a deeper kind of embarrassment that does matter. And that's the embarrassment of who we are and what we love to do. We all have this aspect of ourselves that we present to others, our ideal self. And there's also the part of us that we wish to keep hidden from public eyes our true self. The true self may love uncool things, like one of my friends, he said he loved to listen to FM radio, like an actual radio, not like in the car, every morning. One girl admits that she loves to listen to Luk Grung and Luk Tung music, even though all of her friends love hip hop or K-pop music. And I know someone out there is still playing the audition game, the dancing game, you know, that we used to play. For me, it was this instrument. I was a bassoonist, damn it. And I didn't want to hide the fact that I love this strange, silly clown. I love it. So, you know, people, we hide it inside what we love to do, but we don't show the world. But I love it. Not to mention being called a band geek. Deking Duriyang. I learned a funny expression while working on this talk. Let your freak flag fly. It means proudly show the world your funny, strange, true self. 
But that's not so easy, right? We have to learn to be comfortable with flying that flag. So how did I learn to be comfortable with my true self? Through laughter. And I even remember when I first realized it, when I went for a year of high school in America, I finally had my first ever bassoon teacher. I was practicing as he looked out while I was playing and finally said, is there a duck farting and walking past by? And I just replied right back to him, yeah, and it seems like it just got hit by a big truck. And we just laughed so hard together. It really does sound like that, and it's very funny. Learning to laugh at yourself is the number one solution to overcoming this fear of embarrassment. I'm not bothered by the sound of the bassoon or how I play it. People laugh at me. I was embarrassed, and it bothered me a lot. But the next time, it bothered me less. And I realized I actually had a muscle I never knew I had, an anti-embarrassment muscle. And the more I was able to laugh at myself, the more I developed this anti-embarrassment muscle, which made me more comfortable with being my true bassoon self. Developing your anti-embarrassment muscle is what everyone needs to do. Because the stronger this muscle gets, the braver you are, know you can do anything. And most importantly, the more comfortable you feel with yourself. And laughter is a great way to develop it. Since then, I actually learned to put myself out there in uncomfortable situations intentionally in order to optimize that muscle because the time where I'm most terrified or embarrassed are the time I have the most growth. Like what I'm doing right now, super terrified, but I gotta keep it inside. Learn to develop that anti-embarrassment muscle. Once I stopped so being embarrassed about myself all the time, my mind became free to see and appreciate the clowns all around me, which is a beautiful thing. Many people follow crowds because they don't want to feel lonely. But standing out will not make you lonely. When you break away from the crowd, let go of what is known, you will find others like you. My desire to keep playing this instrument grows stronger as those clowns inspire me. Who wants to start off two millions to get 10,000 playing the bassoon? <laughs> Only clowns do that. It's a very expensive instrument, by the way. But if it's something you want to do or you choose to do, despite whatever, people like that inspire me. When you show the world who you really are, when you fly your freak flag high and proud, you will serve as inspiration for those who will stand up next. You yourself become a source of inspiration by reflecting over and acting on inspirations from others. Let your freak flag fly. That's the deep beauty I found in the bassoon, in the clowns. Looking back, when I first opened that bassoon case for the first time in 23 years, not only I awoke the clown of the orchestra, but I also awoke a clown in me. And I give myself a big a three thumbs up for doing that. We all have a clown deep inside us. A clown who is full of imagination, fantasy, dreams, and characteristics that's regardless of how funny or weird it looks like or sounds like. Clowns that the world needs. We once held freedom in our hands and played with it, but it was taken away from us as we grew up. Dare to have it back. Laugh at yourself, develop that anti-embarrassment muscle, appreciate the beauty that most people neglect, Take the best from every clown you meet and mix that best ingredient into your own life. Let your freak flag fly. Dare to be a clown. And I think 
this clown is ready to make my bong be heard again, along with my fellow clowns. Please welcome. Clowns are getting ready. Thank you. 
Thank you.